United States District Judge Diane Humitiwa from the District of Arizona is the first Native American woman to be a federal judge. Her pathway to the bench began in college when she worked as a victim's rights advocate at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Phoenix. Her journey led her through Washington and jobs with Senator John McCain, also of Arizona, on the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. Judge Amitiwa says she always wanted to see if she had what it took to be a federal prosecutor. She did, and she achieved that goal with hard work, strong mentors, and a commitment to public service that she learned from her mother and father. Judge Diane Humitiwa is an enrolled member of the Hopi tribe. She was born and raised in Arizona and grew up in the city of Phoenix and on the Hopi reservation. It's really kind of a common question that I, I get. You know, you, you seem to have been raised in two worlds. Well, it's really the only world I know. It's one world in, in my view. I would do all the things that high school kids would do. I'd go to the, the dances, I'd go to the football games. I'd go to my brother's track meets, but perhaps on a weekend, my mom and father would pack us up and we'd have to go to the reservation because there'd be a ceremony that we were required to participate in or to attend or to help with. And then we'd pack up and come back and start school again on Monday. That was my, my world. That was how I was raised. In many respects, I felt that I couldn't share my cultural identity widely. You know, people, people would ask me, well, what'd you do over the summer? I didn't want to explain, well, I, I was, you know, preparing for ceremonies over the summer um, in my village because that creates this whole new dialogue that it, you know, is just uh, kind of too exhausting to imagine what um, that conversation would be like. So today I feel a sense of relief for the new generation who can actually talk about their individuality. You know, they can share all of their uniqueness and be forward about it, be forthcoming about it, and I think it's wonderful. And I wonder if I would have been a different person today if I had that opportunity to, to share. Um, to be able to really be open about, you know, some of the, the, the other aspect of my life that people didn't necessarily know about. All rise. The United States District Court for the District of Arizona is now in session. The Honorable Diane J. Kamit Moore presiding. All right, please be seated. Every day I go into my chambers thinking how blessed I am to be there how grateful I am for the opportunity. The positions that I've held in government, each of them required me to take an oath. And that always reinforces the purpose of those positions. I think public service was instilled in me by my parents. Both of my parents were hardworking. They didn't have all of the opportunities of other people in their generation and time. They were both raised and educated in Indian boarding schools. One of the early decisions that my parents made was that their children were not going to go to boarding school. My father was very adamant that his children be proficient in English and have a good public education. Judge Humitua's father joined the Navy to see the world. He served on the USS Midway aircraft carrier as a boilermaker. After the Navy, he worked for the Bureau of Indian Affairs on the roads in Arizona as an engineer in the Division of Transportation. He would often take myself and my mother along to some of his work sites. And that took me to the Wallapai Reservation. It took me to the Havasupai, to the White Mountain Apache, the San Carlos, and the Tohono O'odham Nation, where he was working on road projects. So it really gave me an education about other tribes that were in Arizona. I mean, I didn't know this at the time, that this would be something that I would use later on in life. Enriched by those experiences and an interest in criminal justice, Judge Umitua was hired during college as a victim's advocate in the U.S. Attorney's Office. 
It was her first experience interacting with the federal judiciary, the first step on her pathway to the bench. I certainly wouldn't be here, I think, without mentors, one of whom actually is a senior district judge now here in this court building, Judge McNamee. He was the U.S. attorney at the time. Uh, he was first in the nation to develop that program and helped to create the permanent program so that I actually had a job out of college um, working with violent crime victims, primarily off of the Indian reservations here in Arizona. Inspired and encouraged by McNamee and other mentors in the U.S. Attorney's Office, Judge Humitua attended the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law at Arizona State University. She externed for Judge McNamee during her first summer in law school. Then, an interest in federal Indian law led her to Washington, D.C. to an internship working with Senator John McCain on the Senate Committee on Indian Affairs. After receiving her JD, she returned to work in the nation's capital as one of the committee's lawyers. Senator McCain was probably one of the most influential men in my life. Uh, my father sits on a level all his own, but then there's John McCain. Watching him engage with tribal leaders and watching him engage with other members of the Senate about uh, the federal government uh, obligations to Indian nations. And I kind of see a similarity in terms of his commitment to public service as compared to my father. And I probably would have continued working there, but for the idea that I needed to fulfill that goal of seeing whether or not I had what it took to be a federal prosecutor. And Judge Humitiwa got that chance back where her career began at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Phoenix. Judge Humitiwa worked as an assistant U.S. Attorney and then senior litigation counsel. In 2007, she made history when President George W. Bush nominated her to be U.S. Attorney for the District of Arizona. She was the first Native American woman to hold that position, and in 2013, Judge Humitua made history again when President Barack Obama nominated her for the federal bench. She became the first Native American woman in U.S. history to be confirmed as a district judge. And that I will support and defend the Constitution. And that I will support and defend the Constitution. Of the United States. Of the United States. The day that I was sworn into the district court bench was probably one of the most surreal moments of my life. Really a time for me to reflect on the path it took to get there. I know that there is a strong sentiment that a, a judicial be bench that reflects society by its very nature contributes to society. So I appreciate that my confirmation symbolizes many things to many people. I will carry the weight of this symbolism proudly. In my view, at least in my chambers, it is indeed a team sport because I have no illusions. I could not do this job by myself. My goal has always been in all of my leadership positions to surround myself with people who are committed, dedicated, and hardworking and develop really that camaraderie that we're all in it together. I'm going to rely on you. You're going to rely